Good morning. My name is Guillaume Turc. I am a neurologist from Paris, France, and the current chairman of the SO Guideline Board. Today, it is my real pleasure to uh, conduct an interview with uh, Dr. Christopher Schwarzbach, uh, who had been working at the uh, University Hospital Mannheim and uh, is now a physician at the uh, Hospital Ludwig Ludwigshafen in Germany. He is the coordinator of the ongoing SANO study, which is a national but center trial on postural care. And he also started working on the anti-stroke project in close cooperation with Armin Gao and Martin O'Donnell. And uh, he will present uh, very interesting results uh, on the associations between acute febrile illness, influenza vaccination, and the risk of acute stroke insight from the inter-stroke study. Yeah, thank you, Jayon, for introducing me, and thank you for this opportunity uh, to present our results here and to discuss them. My pleasure. So first of all, what is acute febrile illness? Is there a definition for, for this, and why uh, should we be interested in, in this condition? So. We use this definition of uh, acute febrile illness as a self-reported measure within uh, the interstroke study, which has been systematically assessed. What um, we are actually looking into is the association of inflammatory disease um, and uh, stroke. And so inflammatory disease as a potential trigger factor for stroke. However, uh, acute febrile illness is most commonly associated um, with acute inflammation. Um, so it's reasonable to, um, to say that acute febrile illness is a suitable measure, a self-reported measure uh, to um, detect inflammatory disease. Um, and this is what we did in our study. Thank you. So you had actually two hypotheses for this study, one about acute febrile illness and another one closely related for a um, influenza vaccination. Could you please tell us a bit more about this? Yeah, so basically we looked uh, into two associations here and, and the reason was, of course, that we had this overwhelming topic um, of uh, recent uh, years, which of course is COVID-19. And uh, with the emergence of COVID-19, um, we've seen that the association of infection and stroke gained uh, much additional attention in, in the last years. And uh, of course, we have several reports which uh, indicated that COVID-19 actually carries an increased risk to develop stroke. And I think that this association is established meanwhile, um, but also that uh, influenza vaccination is associated with lower incidence of mortality in COVID-19. However, acute verbal illness and other acute inflammatory diseases um, have uh, been reported before to transiently increase the risk of ischemic stroke and potentially also addressable hemorrhage. And on the other hand, influenza vaccination was associated with a reduced risk of stroke in several observational studies and the corresponding meta-analysis. However, all this data is mainly limited to Northern America and Europe, of course, and we have insufficient data when we are looking to other parts of the world. Um, and for the case of for influenza vaccination, uh, we also have to discuss that um, in the absence of randomized controlled trials, um, these results may also be biased by confounding, especially a so-called healthy user bias, which is a big problem when you look into the association of influenza vaccination and stroke. So here it's also most important to adjust for, um, for variables, um, which may also influence the willingness to get vaccinated. And this is what we did in our analysis. So what we hypothesized um, was that acute verbal illness um, will be associated uh, with increased risk of ischemic stroke and also intracerebral hemorrhage um, in different parts of the world. And this was the first hypothesis, of course. And the second one was that influenza vaccination within one year will lower the risk of stroke independent of other stroke risk factors we adjusted for. So what was the methodology then that you used uh, to assess such associations? And um, on which variables did you adjust uh, to uh, make sure that these associations were not confounded? So uh, what we did is we used conditional logistic regression um, to calculate odds ratios and 95% confidence intervals 
And we adjusted for 13 different variables, which might alter the stroke risk. So this, of course, are mainly stroke risk factors like hypertension, physical activity, smoking, cardiac risk factors like arterial fibrillation, but also socioeconomic factors. And um, what we did too, when we looked into the association of the influenza vaccination and stroke, you know, we looked into in an extended model into some more variables, which we also adjusted for then, um, like a wealth index, employment status, marital status, and, and other factors um, which um, might be relevant when you look into the, uh, the willingness to get vaccinated. What were the main results of your uh, study? So what we actually found is that acute febrile illness in the preceding four weeks was indeed more commonly reported by ischemic stroke patients, namely 8.7% than control subjects, namely 5.6%. And after the adjustment for these 13 variables we just talked about, um, we found um, that the adjusted odds ratio was still 1.18. So it's a borderline significance, but it was of significance. And, and this is, of course, a finding which supports the results, um, previous results uh, on the association of stroke and infection, um, even if this association hasn't been that strong in our analysis than before in uh, other analysis which has been re reporting or um, looking into this association. Um, interestingly, um, this association was strong, especially when compared to community-based controls with an adjusted odds ratio of 2.0. And these results are actually um, comparable um, also in their quantity um, to results reported before on the association of information acute for illness and stroke. Um, but when we looked into the association to hospital-based controls, um, um, the loss ratio was just 0.89, so it's vanished. Um, and this is, of course, an interesting finding, um, which needs some explanation. And we think that, obviously, Acute viral illness um, is more prevalent, of course, in hospital-based controls and in community-based controls. Patients are more prone to infection, possibly um, admitted to hospital um, with um, infection. But on the other hand, I have to admit we cannot rule out that we have an underreporting of, um, um, of acute viral illness uh, in our community-based controls as these were self-reported measures, which couldn't be verified afterwards. Causal inference is uh, always a bit difficult uh, in case control studies and in uh, clinical epidemiology in general. What makes you think that the association uh, between influenza vaccination and a decreased risk of stroke is causal rather than confounded? And for example, it might be due to uh, some unmeasured confounders. For example, maybe patients who receive influenza vaccination uh, receive also more medical attention or are more aware of the symptoms of stroke and, and the risk factors? Yeah, so actually, uh, this is a big problem. So what you're referring to is the so-called healthy user bias, um, which um, is always a big problem when you look into the association of influenza vaccination and stroke. And um, there's been always um, um, a big point of criticism um, also in previous reports on this association. And actually, it's hard to address. That's right. Um, so, however, what we try to do here is uh, to also adjust for variables um, which, might, um, um, which might influence the willingness of people to get vaccinated. So, socioeconomic factors, basically, to, to address this kind of healthy user bias. So, healthy user bias means that, of course, um, Healthy patients um, who are less prone um, to stroke are potentially um, are more willing to, to get vaccinated and uh, older patients, um, more frail patients are usually um, less vaccinated. Um, so we try to address that, but of course, um, this is something uh, that we can't rule out. Um, and um, of course, the best thing would be to have prospective studies on that matter. And this is something, of course, our results also implicate. You know? um, to answer you the second part of your question on the association, so um, on the mechanisms um, which we suppose take place here, of course, there's uh, this one theory, so the one hypothesis is that, of course, with influenza vaccination, you might prevent an influenza. 
Um, and um, as um, we talked before about the association of uh, acute verbal illness and stroke, um, this um, might be a reason uh, why inf influenza vaccination is effective um, in um, preventing stroke. Um, however, what we found is that um, uh, our results were independent of the seasonality of stroke vaccination. And this was something else which was really surprising for us because, of course, we expected that a pro uh, pro um, protective effect of influenza vaccination would be big bigger within the influenza season than without, but this wasn't the case. And um, one explanation might be that, uh, of course, we had um, many regions of the world um, where we don't have this kind of seasonality, um, like in uh, the northern and southern hemispheres. Um, but another result we found is that uh, patients who got vaccinated five times in a row over the past five years um, were better protected than patients who got just one to four vaccinations. And um, actually, there's an, another theory, which also been addressed in animal studies, um, that um, influenza vaccination um, um, stimulates the immune system, and that this stimulation, per se, um, rather than protection of infection, um, might be um, um, might be a factor in preventing um, um, stroke, not preventing stroke, but lowering the risk of stroke, of course. Um, and um, perhaps our results can be interpreted in this kind of way. Um, but of course, it's just hypothesis, and this is something you have to look into, perhaps in further studies, of course. Thank you. So what would be the single take-home message that you would like people to remember from this uh, very interesting analysis? I think the most important take-home message is that um, influenza vaccination, of course, uh, is recommended, especially for older patients, to prevent influenza. But our results also encourage the use, um, uh, to the use of influenza vaccination in a wider scale and to lower the general burden of stroke. So um, our results just encourage the use of influenza vaccination, get vaccinated. So that's basically uh, the key message, um, which we can support by our results. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julian, for the interview. And thank you for the kind questions and the kind introduction.